Sharpening knives by hand on whetstones is super easy. There, I said it. Let me know how wrong I am in the comments below. Seriously though, it isn't that hard and you don't need a bunch of fancy gear to get a decent edge on your own kitchen knives. Sure, you can totally go down the rabbit hole and get all the crazy gear and watch all of Nato's sharpening videos and, and get really nerdy about knife sharpening, but it's not necessary just to maintain your own knives at home. Today, I'm gonna to show you the bare minimum of gear that's required and how to get a good edge on your knives the very first time. Okay, so first up, you need a knife, preferably a dull one. Uh, if you're scared about scratching up your fancy new Japanese knife the first time you use a whetstone, that's fine. Use your Ikea knife or uh, grab your mom's. I guarantee it'll be sharper than when you started sharpening it. You're also gonna need a couple of whetstones. And sure, there's like all kinds of fancy sharpening gadgets out there that do all the work for you, uh, but I guarantee that almost anybody with a little bit of practice can get a better edge on a traditional sharpening stone. First off, you're gonna need a rough one, uh, around two to 400 grit. This is the knife for 220 grit. Uh, it's my favorite stone to get knives started. It's quite rough, so it's gonna grind steel very quickly, but it's gonna leave the edge feeling pretty rough as well. That's why you need to get a second stone, around 1,000 grit. Uh, this is smoother, but it grinds steel a lot more slowly. So it's not gonna be good for starting your edge, but it's gonna give it a much nicer polish. This is a great place to finish off any and all Western knives that are made from softer steels. Anything made from a harder steel, especially Japanese knives, you can still get a great finish on the stone, but you might wanna get a 4,000 or 8,000 down the road. These are just the essentials to get started with. What you do need to get the first time around though is a truing stone. This guy uh, is really rough and it's got this crazy texture on it. It's designed for keeping your other stones flat. We'll show you later how it works. You're also gonna want some rags that you can get dirty and gross. Uh, I would designate a few for sharpening that you can use every time. Uh, you're gonna need some water because water stones work with water, big shock. And you're gonna want some paper to test the knives on when they're done, just so you can tell how good of a job you did. Uh, this is phone book paper, it's endangered, so if you can't get it yourself, uh, maybe grab just like some newspaper, magazine paper, uh, even printer paper is okay. Uh, optional, but nice to have, is a stone holder. This will keep your stone from sliding around all over the place when you're trying to sharpen, uh, but it'll also boost it up a little bit so you're not like running your knuckles into the countertop when you're sharpening. Uh, a honing rod, ceramic, preferably, to knock the burr off your knives when you're done. Again, we'll talk about that later. And if you want to be fancy, get yourself a leather strop for making your knives extra laser sharp. Boo, boo. Uh, an apron is also nice uh, to keep your beautiful clothes from getting dirty. Uh, this is a search and rescue denim apron made in Canada. Keeps my beautiful Vaporwave shirt from getting sharpening gunk all over it. So next up, we wanna soak our stones. Uh, rough and medium stones like this often require soaking in water before use. They're very thirsty, and so this stops them from just soaking up all the water you put on the stone uh, when you get to sharpening. Uh, check the maker's instructions. Some finer stones don't require soaking and it can actually be damaged by it. Uh, but these Knifewear series, the 220 and the 1000, always need to be soaked before you use them. You wanna let these soak for 10 or 20 minutes before you use them. So while that's happening, let's get the rest of our gear set up. Uh, first off, I like a towel because this is a messy, wet process and this will keep most of the stuff contained. The stone holder, we're gonna just open this guy up so it'll accommodate my stone. Uh, and set that right on the towel. See, nice and sturdy. Uh, these rubber ones, they stay in place pretty well too. Uh, but again, wet process, we want a cloth to soak all this stuff up. I'm right-handed, I like to keep my water on my non-dominant side, so while I'm sharpening, I can just grab it, splash and go. Uh, anything I'm not gonna be using, I try to keep out of the way. Ceramic rod, don't need it right now. Uh, stuff that's made out of paper or leather that can get damaged by water, keep that way off to the side. Get our knife. I also like to keep a couple of paper towels or, or just regular towels nearby just for cleaning up any extra mess, wiping off my knife, that sort of thing. Okay, let's inspect our knife before we get to sharpening. Uh, we wanna get an idea of how sharp or not sharp it is. Uh, if it's our own knife, uh, we probably know, right? Uh, but just check the edge, maybe maybe you know cut some paper or just cut a vegetable, see what kind of shape it's in. We also wanna check the profile of the edge, make sure it's a nice consistent curve the way it should be. Uh, if it's wavy or the knife is chipped, it's gonna make sharpening the first time a lot more challenging and probably more frustrating. 
We're also using a more sort of medium sized knife here. We've got a Santoku. Uh, generally, you want something kind of average size to get started on because it's the easiest to sharpen. You don't want to sharpen a, a paring knife or a flexible blade or something really, really thick the first time. It's not going to be fun to sharpen. Okay, our stones are ready to go. Let's take our first stone, the 220, uh, and put it on our holder. You wanna make sure you only ever use one side of the stone, so I actually put the knife wear side downwards, and that acts as a marker so that you know not to sharpen on that side of the stone. That just keeps the base nice and flat so it doesn't rock around while you're using it. Tighten up the stone holder there. So what are we actually doing when we use a stone? We are taking uh, basically an edge that's rounded off and dull like this, and we're trying to grind both sides so it comes to a nice strong point like that, like a V shape. Uh, this is dull, this is sharp. So we start with the first side, we're gonna grind it straight at a consistent angle and fold over a little burr of steel. That's gonna tell us that we've met the other side. Then we're gonna form the other side the same way until we get that nice even V. And then our knife is basically sharp. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that, but not much. So the challenging bit here is how to actually keep that consistent angle. Because if our angle isn't consistent as we're sharpening and we're like scooping the knife, we're gonna just end up with that rounded edge again, and that's not what we want. So, okay, so first we need to find our angle. Generally speaking, sharp, Japanese knives are sharpened at 15 degrees on either side for a total edge angle of 30 degrees. Western knives, it's a little more like 45 total, about 22 and a half either side. The difference is Japanese knives are usually made from harder steel and can hold that finer edge longer, whereas knives made of softer steel will dull too quickly if you sharpen them to too fine an angle. So, okay, so first up, we can just freehand or eyeball the angle. Uh, this is what a lot of professional sharpeners do with a lot of practice. If you're new, it's gonna be less precise, but basically set the knife to the stone at 90 degrees, break that in half, you got about 45 degrees, uh, break that into a third and you end up with 15 degrees. Not very precise, but if you're consistent with your angle, it'll be fine. Okay, this next technique is way more precise. We're gonna use nickels. Canadian or American are fine. We're gonna set one down as a spacer nickel and then a stack of three or four just above it. Three nickels for 15 degrees, four nickels for 20 degrees. Put your knife on the opposite side, remove that spacer nickel, and then lay it down flat on that stack of nickels, and you will have about 15 degrees or so. To keep your angle consistent, you're gonna Stick your index finger on the spine so it's touching both the spine of the knife and the stone. Lift that away, get rid of those nickels, bring your hand back and you've still got 15 degrees. Now you can get to sharpening, but stones are very good at grinding steel. They're even better at grinding fingers. Uh, and trust me, I guarantee you are not tough enough to make it through the entire knife without some sort of protection. So you can grab rubber finger protectors. Uh, they sell them at stationary stores or on Amazon. You could tape it up with electrical tape too. That's a little more janky. I would just grab some finger protectors. Today, I'm gonna do this in the easiest way possible. I'm gonna use a sharpening guide clip. Uh, some people might consider this cheating, but if you're a beginner, this is one of the best ways to get started. You can always learn freehanding down the road, but this frees you up to focus on just getting a good consistent angle so you can focus on the actual sharpening process. This guy has a larger side for taller knives and even a skinnier side for shorter petty knives. So it works really nicely, but it sets a 15 degree angle so it's not good for Western knives. These ceramic bumpers are really tough too, so they'll last for a long time. Basically, you just clip it right onto the knife. Any kind of medium thickness knife will work fine, just thicker knives won't work as well. Put it straight down on the stone and you have 15 degrees. Voila. Just remember, having a consistent angle while you sharpen is way more important than having an exact angle. Okay, now we're ready to sharpen. You wanna splash water on your stone and keep it well hydrated the entire time you're using it. We're gonna start at the heel of the knife and we're gonna gradually work our way towards the tip to ensure we get the entire edge. We're gonna grab the handle with our dominant hand and then we're just gonna rest the fingers of our non-dominant hand right behind the edge there. We wanna avoid touching the stone. We would just wanna weigh down the edge of the knife. We're not pressing at all. And then we just start running the knife back and forth along the stone. We wanna make sure we're using the entire length of the stone. If you just work in a small section, you'll end up with a divot in the stone really quickly. So try to use the whole thing. All of the motion here is from my elbows. My wrists are not really moving, and that's especially important when you're doing a freehand angle. I'm also moving quite slowly. I'm not rushing like this, like you would see somebody doing in one of our stores, uh, because when you sharpen for the first time, probably the first hundred times, consistency is far more important than speed. 
gradually, the side of the knife that's touching the stone is gonna grind away. We can actually see some rough scratches right along the edge there, and that's a good sign that we're doing the job properly. On the opposite side that's not touching the stone, we wanna feel gently with the pad of our thumb just along the bevel there towards the edge, and it's gonna feel rough and scratchy, kind of like a scrubby pad or, uh, or Velcro, and that's a burr. That means the steel has folded all the way over from the opposite side, and we can move forward. You wanna make sure you've got one all the way to the heel of the knife so that the heel gets ground properly. We're gonna find where that burr starts to die off around here. We're gonna move the clip down a little bit. We're gonna wet our stone again, and we're gonna work on the next part of the knife. Again, go slow, keep your pressure minimal along the edge. You do not need to push hard to make the stone work. It works better the lighter you push. Check for a burr. If you don't have it, keep going. And once you do have your burr, you can keep moving downwards. Move your angle guide down, or if you're using uh, your finger to set your angle, just move your hand down the knife. Rehydrate your stone and keep going. Easy peasy. When you sharpen knives, you should feel relaxed, almost a bit zen. If you're sweaty or frustrated or, or exhausted by the process, uh, you're doing something wrong and it's time to slow down. Now, if you are freehanding your angle, and even if you're not, you wanna check the opposite side of your knife, the side that's touching the stone, fairly often. You wanna make sure that you're getting a nice, consistent thickness of blade road. That is the section of the knife that you're actually grinding away. You wanna make sure it's all that kind of rough scratchy pattern from the stone, but it's really important that it is a consistent thickness along the knife because that means that you most likely have a consistent angle. Now the tip is the one part of the knife that's trickier and the angle guide won't work as well there. Uh, in general, the tip of the knife often sweeps upwards and so you have to almost increase your angle. You're not technically increasing your angle, but it's gonna feel like it. And we're just gonna work in a bunch of small little sections so that we create a curve. So, one finger, work the first section, check your edge, and then just pull the handle of the knife up ever so slightly to increase that angle. Another tip that works really well is if you lean your whole body to the left. As I lean to the left, that knife rocks with me, see? rocking on the stone. And we're just gonna work in sections, very small sections, slowly increasing our angle as we go until we get that very tip. Now we have a burr all the way along the edge of the knife. You wanna make sure you have that burr all the way along. If you miss the spot, go back and sharpen it. Otherwise, that part of the knife will not get sharp. And you're, you should be able to hear your burr if you listen carefully too. This is no burr. This is a burr. Once you're done on the first section of the knife, you can move your clip further up the knife and sharpen the next section. You wanna remove the clip and place it back on each time. If you're sliding it down the knife like that, you can actually scratch up the surface of the knife. That's the one downside of these clips. Okay, it is time to sharpen the other side of the knife. We're gonna keep holding the knife in our dominant hand. Some folks like to switch hands and sharpen the exact same way, but just mirror it. I find that fairly difficult because I'm not good with my left hand. So I instead hold the knife uh, perpendicular with the stone, and I grip the handle almost like the handlebars of a bike. If you are using your hands as an angle guide, you can put your thumb along the spine of the knife, and then your fingertips right along the edge there. Just remember to protect that thumb with something. In this case with the clip, I'm just gonna put the clip on, and then just rest my fingertips right behind the edge there. We're gonna wet our stone down again, and away we go. And same as before, we're just working back and forth using the entire length of the stone with a very light pressure. Now that will mean that you can spend more time grinding the first side of the knife and end up with the edge a little more beveled on that side. That can give your knife a really subtle right hand bias I'm fine with that, I don't really notice it when I'm cutting, but if you're worried about that, you can just spend a little extra time on that second side, and then compare the blade road on the two sides of the knife to make sure they're fairly similar. Okay, moving further down, checking for a burr, wetting our stone, 
Moving our clip. Rinse and repeat. Now that you've been doing this for a little while, uh, you'll notice I've really started to speed up. You wanna make sure you take a moment to slow down, not rush it, not press too hard, take a deep breath, use the whole length of that stone. Just remember to always focus on consistency over speed. Remember, as we get down to the tip of the knife, we're just gonna lean our body to the left a little bit, increase our angle, work in small sections. Okay, and we again have a burr all the way along the length of the knife. So now our knife is sharp, right? Well, it's, it's sort of sharp. It is gonna be a lot sharper. But, if we test it on some paper, it's sharp, but listen to that sound. And it doesn't exactly slice the paper super easily. It wants to fight a little bit. The cut it makes is very rough. That's because we still have that burr on our knife. So, we're going to deburr it. Basically, deburring means removing that burr that we just created. Yes, it's important for getting a sharp knife, but once you have the edge sharp, it actually gets in the way of it cutting properly. So, we're gonna put our knife back down on the stone at the angle we sharpened to. We're just gonna draw the entire length of the edge in one smooth motion, side to side, starting from heel, going to the tip. And that burr is basically like the lid of a tin can. We just wanna bend it back and forth enough times that it's gonna snap off the knife. Okay, and that feels a lot better. There's maybe some fragments of it left, but it's mostly gone. Let's see the difference, test that edge again and show those two cuts side by side. Much smoother. It still sounds rough, but it's much smoother than it was when we had that burr on there, and it's much smoother than when we started. So at this point, you could just stop. And if you are especially hard on your knives, you might just wanna finish off on this 220 stone. It's gonna feel rough when you cut, but the edge is gonna be more durable. Before we switch stones though, we're gonna use our truing stone on this guy. As I was using that knife, the stone wears down the knife, but the knife also wears on the stone, just much more slowly. So this stone is no longer perfectly flat. After one knife, you won't really be able to tell, but if you sharpen several knives, you're gonna notice a big difference in the edge, and it's not gonna sharpen your knives as well as it used to. Truing your stones is really important to keep them working well throughout the lifetime of the stone. So we're just gonna wet it, like so. We take our truing stone, lay it flat, and we're just grinding down that top surface of the stone. I just like to eyeball it, um, but some folks will take a pencil or a sharpie and actually draw a grid on the stone and flatten away until the grid's gone. You don't have to do this every time you use the stone, but for these really soft, rough stones, the more often you do it, the less work it's gonna be. Trust me, trying to true a stone after you've sharpened 20 or 30 knives on it is really awful and it can take you an hour. So instead, spend a couple of minutes and just make it nice and flat. I also like to bevel off these corners. They can get really sharp and, uh, and you don't want them to cut your finger. Okay, we're gonna rinse off our stone. We'll set that guy aside for later. We're also gonna give our knife a quick rinse and a wipe, just to make sure there's none of that rough grit from the 220 left, because we don't want that contaminating our finer, smoother stones. Okay, so now we're gonna refine our edge on this 1000 grit stone. And for the sake of comparison, I'm gonna freehand the angle on this one. Uh, this clip is a really great tool for beginners, uh, but eventually you might wanna learn how to freehand. It's how all our staff sharpen. Uh, it's not that hard. Also, the one downside of the clip, you can see I was just sliding it along the knife willy-nilly, and it can make a bit of a line on your knife. So we are gonna use the nickel trick just to get a feel for it. Remember, three nickels, 15 cents, 15 degrees, 20 cents, 20 degrees, and that guy down. So that's about 15 degrees there. It's actually, it's, it's a little more than you think it would be. So I'm just gonna get a good feel for that. Pop those guys out of here. Again, starting at the edge, when you're freehanding your angle, it's really important that you keep your right wrist locked. You want it really tight, and all the motion is from your elbows. What you don't wanna be doing is scooping and changing your angle as you sharpen. Cause that's not gonna get sharp. So, just an angle, back and forth. Not going too fast, using the whole stone. Keep that pressure really light. Another reason to keep that pressure light is because if you are freehanding your angle and you're pressing really hard, 
you're going to be fighting against your opposite hand and your angle's going to be changing. So same as before, we're just sharpening until we get a burr, section by section. But the burr here is going to be smaller. It's not going to be as rough and scratchy as it was on the 220 grit. Another good way to feel for the burr is just with the pads of your fingers, your finger prints, I guess. Uh, again, just running down towards the edge along the bevel of the knife. Okay, so we've got a burr, we're gonna move on. We're gonna speed this process up a little bit and just get this knife done. But again, when you're doing this at home, especially for several times, just take your time and go slow. Remember on the tip, lean your whole body to the left, increase that angle a tiny bit, and there we go. Okay, side number two, same as before. Fingers along the edge. If you are using your finger as an angle guide, just use your thumb along the spine there. Don't forget to keep your stone nicely hydrated. Just rinse off some of that extra grit that's building up on the stone. Okay, so we are done both sides of the knife. Again, we're gonna deburr it, 15 degrees along the whole length of the edge there, back and forth. You can also go tip to heel, if that's more comfortable for you, doesn't matter. I don't care, I'm not gonna come to your house and tell you to do it differently. Okay, give that bad boy a wipe. And we have a sharp knife. Let's test this out, show you the difference between a 1000 grit edge compared, let's have a side-by-side -side comparison with a 220 grit edge and a 1000 grit edge. Feels really nice, uh, that's gonna cut beautifully. However, the edge is still a little rough. You can probably hear it on the paper there, and I can just feel, because I've done this a lot, it is just a tiny bit scratchy along the edge. So we're gonna get into some more advanced deburring. We could move beyond this stone, but for now, we're just gonna totally deburr this knife and make it super smooth. And for that, we are gonna need a ceramic honing rod. These ceramic rods are the best for Japanese knives. You don't wanna be using a steel or diamond rod. So when you're using this guy, what you don't wanna do is swing it around like Gordon Ramsay like that. Hold it straight up and down. Damp cloth on the table to keep it in place so it doesn't slide around on you. Find your 15 degrees. These guys have a guard on them with a skinny side and a thick side. The thick side is around 20 degrees. The skinny side is around 15. So set your knife right under that guard so it's touching the rod. Set your knife just outside of that guard, and so the edge is touching the rod. Starting with the heel of the knife, we're just going to drag it all the way down in one clean slicing motion from heel to tip. Back and forth. This is good edge maintenance, so you don't have to sharpen your knife as often. But it's also a great way to deburr your knives. Just to show you from the side, clean slice, heel to tip, going down the rod. Kind of like you're slicing a shawarma. Cool, 10 or 20 of those. Edge is feeling smoother, cutting much nicer. Let's get a side-by-side -side comparison of the 220, the 1000, and the 1000 from the honing rod. Really nice and smooth. That's gonna cut beautifully. If we wanna go even further, we could take our leather paddle strop. Uh, you wanna make sure you're using this guy either just out in the air or on a flat surface. Again, we're gonna set the knife to it at 15 degrees and just gently draw leading with the spine of the knife towards the edge, like so. We don't want to cut our strop, so we're leading with the spine. This guy's just going to do extra fine deburn. It's just going to make that edge extra, extra smooth. I start on the suede side, like so, and then I use the leather side to finish. This is another way to keep your knives sharp on a, on a regular basis. You give them a stropping a couple times a week, uh, and they're going to stay sharp a lot longer. There we go, beautiful. Super, super smooth. Now for a softer steel knife, that is the way to finish it on a thousand grit. If you want an even smoother edge, you can go up to a knife for 4,000 grit. I really like that stone. Uh, you can go even finer up to 8,000 or beyond, but the finer your edge is, the finer that grit, the faster the knife is gonna dull. Basically what these stones do is they make little teeth in your edges, little tiny little jagged teeth. And the smaller those teeth are, the smoother the knife is, but the faster it's gonna dull. If they're too fine, they're not gonna bite into the skin of like a pepper or tomato very easily, um, and they're not gonna be as nice to use. So it's all about finding a balancing point. Let's test out this thousand grit edge and see how well it cuts. Okay, let's test this baby out. Uh, see how much I suck at knife sharpening these days. The old tomato test. Oh yeah. I mean, you know your knife's dull when it can't cut a tomato properly. Woo, yeah. 
that is a sharp knife. If you can cut it without having to push at all, you got a nice edge. One of the reasons I just stopped off on a 1000 grit is because it gives this edge a little bit of tooth and so it cuts, it bites just a tiny bit into that tomato and clears that skin super easily, but it doesn't feel rough. Really nice. And, uh, and for funsies, let's just uh, dice up ye old onion here. All right. Obviously, I did a good job on the tip because it's scoring in beautifully. Uh, the tip of the knife is the hardest part to sharpen, so you might find yourself spending a little more time there. Yeah, looks good to me. So there you have it. Sharpening knives is not as hard as people make it out to be. It just takes a little bit of practice and, and some decent equipment. I'd suggest just watching this video back the first few times you sharpen your knives and you will be a pro in no time. If you're still having issues, uh, check out our video on the top 10 most common knife sharpening mistakes to help you through some of those trouble spots. You can always take a class in one of our stores, Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, or Vancouver, as well as uh, just troubleshoot with us online, shoot us an email, or leave a comment below and we'll get in touch and help you out. You can get set up with uh, a good quality set of knife sharpening stones on knifer.com for well under 100 bucks. We do have some fancier options out there if you're the type to get the good gear right off the bat. One of these days, if you have a Japanese knife that you're sharpening yourself, check out our video on how to thin your knives. It's a very important part of the process. Sharpening just the edge means that, well, the edge is sharp, but the part behind the edge is what continues the cut when you get into an onion or a potato. And so if you just sharpen and sharpen and sharpen, the knife ends up very thick. One of these days, you're gonna to wanna to thin it out. It's the only part of knife sharpening that those sharpening gadgets just can't do. And it's another reason why sharpening a whetstones, in our opinion, is better. Pop your questions in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.